up. Let's jump right into this. This is a really simple um, project just to match the quilt that I already made. So I know you guys see these panels and I see them and I've always wanted to work with them. I thought they were just beautiful. They are in my color story and I'm just like, yeah, let's go for it. So some of the panels ask that you cut directly on the line and some of them ask that you leave a quarter inch border. So with these panels, the instructions come on the panel, read your instructions and then make your project accordingly. Now, I didn't do everything that the instructions told me to, but I came pretty darn close. So first thing I'm doing is this one requires that I cut on the line and I'm getting close. Um, you can still see a little white there. I wasn't really worried about it because I figured it would be caught up in the seam allowance. So if you are super particular, go ahead and do your best to get that white line gone. But I'm just going around trimming this up. Now the outer layer, that's the first page, is going to be a little bit larger than the rest of your pages so that it actually beds in there nicely. I always have a couple of bags of batting around whenever it goes on sale at Joann's. I'm usually sure to just grab one or two. So you, you just never know what little project is going to need just a touch of batting. I just keep it around. So I am cutting these the same size as the panels. So I'm using a yardstick here and I think they're like 13. I think these panels are like 13 inches. I don't know. I don't remember. But again, the directions are on the on the panel so you don't have to worry about it so I am trimming up this batting and you can see that it is the same size and there are some that have you double up the batting I didn't double up any of these I just use one single layer for all of it and I like it because my book closes with ease it's not a big deal it tells you which ones go where um, which ones need to be back to back so that you come out with the book that makes sense. I am laying this on top. The batting is on the very bottom. So I have fabric to fabric on top and then the batting is on the back. Now, I talked about this in one of my other videos about there are some things that you just cannot make make sense for me. And one of them is sewing with the batting actually on the machine touching your feed dogs there are a lot of people who have great batting and it doesn't become an issue. But I find that when I do it, it, it is an issue and I just can't make that make sense. So I am sewing with the fabric side down, batting up because I don't want the feed dogs fighting with the batting and pulling this batting into the machine. I, I just, I don't think that is the best method. Um, it's just my personal opinion. So this is how I do it. And I did not spray base. I didn't really think that I needed to. This was just a quick, simple project. So I really didn't do the extras with it. So I didn't spray based. I didn't pin based. I literally laid the fabrics down. I guess I pinned around on the edges. You're going to see me turn this down. I like to hit that with heat so that when you turn your bag inside out, you've already kind of got that quarter inch there ready to go. Now I'm just cutting off the excess batting and then we're going to turn this bag inside out or do what they call birthing the bag. I don't I don't love that phrase, but that's what they call it. But I do like to turn things inside out. I don't know why. Maybe it's because I get to use this cool bone uh, folder kind of tool when I do it. But after you turn this out, go on ahead and uh, shape it and flatten it down and everything. Hit it with that iron and be done with it. You can go on ahead and stitch up that little hole or use some um, fabric glue. I don't know. If you're giving this to a baby, I don't know that you really want to have any fabric glue on here, but to each his own. So I'm doing the same thing with all of the, um, with the pages. And really it's only three double-sided pages. So it's not too bad. It's not like we're doing a 20 page book or anything like that. And this is all the alphabet. And it stacks up kind of weird. So be sure to use the directions because what I thought was right was incorrect. And I had to play with it a little bit. Even though it's only three pages, you can get a little bit confused when you're looking at this. 
So I'm just pinning this. This is kind of thick. I didn't use double batting in any of it. I used one single layer. But this is a pretty thick book. And so I just went for it. I just centered this up with my clear foot. And now we are going. This machine is really nice for what it is. It was able to get through all of those layers with minimal issues. Um, not, in, not any really issues with it. I just sewed straight down on that line that I already drew. And then I decided to go back over it on the edges just for um, good measure. Nothing other than that. And now we have a little book. Isn't it cute? Oh, I just love it. And so I went ahead and trimmed the little excess threads. And this did not take a long time to make. And then it matches the quilt. So if you're going to give a baby quilt, you can go right ahead and give a little book with it that the baby can play with and touch and roll on and all the things. I made two of them. So here's the other panel. And that's it, guys. Thank you so much for hanging with me. And um, if you haven't done so already, please check out the bubble blanket that matches this uh, little book. I think you guys will get a kick out of how I made it. They call them puff quilts, biscuit quilts, but I'm going to do another one at some point because I don't love the technique that I use, but it is cute and it really does match these little books. And I think it's a really nice present. Again, thanks so much for hanging out with me and I will catch you guys on my next video.